Some games are good, some games are bad, some games are great, but what makes them so? Welcome to The Key Point, a series looking at aspects of games that make them what they are. Today we'll be looking at Bioshock, the why its atmosphere makes it one of the most beloved games to this day. Bioshock is a first person shooter, or FPS in short, set in a city at the bottom of the ocean. It was constructed in the 1950s by Andrew Ryan, a fictional industrialist who has strong beliefs about the power of the individual and sets about building a utopia along those lines. You're drawn there by reasons that will be revealed as the game progresses, but the city is in ruins when you arrive, riven apart by a struggle for power, and the population driven mad by plasmids and atom, a substance that gives people superhuman powers. The gameplay draws strong inspiration from the System Shock series, which were action RPGs renowned to this day for their impact on the gaming industry, and retains many of the outward characteristics of the earlier games. For instance, plasmids are the equivalents of the mental side powers of System Shock. But Bioshock is an FPS first and foremost, and many of those resemblances are superficial. The core of the game remains the same as in any other FPS, taking on enemies in combat and defeating them with violence. So you might well ask the question why it stands out beyond other FPS's in people's memories. Judas! The answer is atmosphere. Bioshock oozes atmosphere. The game is set in a pseudo 1950s Americana world and everything in the game is centered around this. The architecture is a given, the characters are dressed in the fashion of the time, the weapons resemble those you might find in the era, but the visuals are just complementing the atmosphere. What truly brings the world alive is the dialogue. The story dialogue you hear is very good and at times iconic. I dare say that everybody who's played Bioshock will remember this line. No, a man chooses. A slave obeys. But as good as all the other aspects are, what truly gives Bioshock the atmosphere it has is the random dialogue. When the little sisters are under attack, they cheer on the big daddies. When you defeat the big daddies, they cry and mourn. Okay. Ooh. Splices threaten you. Are you afraid of me, monster? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Since you asked so nicely, I am. They wonder where you are. They scream in fear. No pay, coward. She's much man. Fight me properly. Nutters! How dare you touch me? No, I didn't touch you. But when they're relaxed, they also talk about all sorts of things. <gasps> Darling. He died for Are you. Are you hungry? For you, you son of a bitch. You can run, but we'll find you. We run this place from tits to toes. This isn't over. That tenderloin. If oh, you no. serve that in any respectable hotel in New York, they'd laugh you out of town. <laughs> um. Hello? Your kind isn't welcome here. My kind, you say? How you speak you as if me. this is some kind of fine, fine dining establishment. I am tenderizing the meat. There's a variety to the random dialogue and a seamless transition between them that pulls the player into the mood of the game. It's one of those rare games where it's worth sneaking up on enemies just to listen to them talking to themselves and each other. That's a rare quality. The game also has a narrative. It's presented by voice messages and tapes that you can find. This is a throwback to what System Shock used to work around the lack of budget for animation and cinematics. But even though it was a workaround, it has advantages in that the player has a choice on how much attention they want to pay to it. Aside from a few cutscenes, most of the story is entirely optional and you can engage with it as much or as little as you want. The voice recordings also have the advantage of presenting information from the perspective of the various NPCs. Cutscenes tend to present things as they are, while the voice recordings you find are the NPCs speaking of what they think. It may or may not be true, and therefore the player is presented with a situation where they must interpret those recordings according to what they see through their own journey and what they may have already inferred about the NPC based on previous information. Instead of just being a watcher, the player is drawn to consider the world and the actions of the various NPCs. So what started as a storytelling device to save money actually serves to engage the player deeper into the lore and atmosphere of the game. 
All of this environmental dialogue comes together to give the sense of a world where the AI characters aren't just targets for your guns. It's still an illusion of course, this is still a FPS. Your only way to interact with enemies is to fight or avoid them. The player doesn't get any choice in how the narrative develops. You will confront Andrew Ryan, you will confront Atlas. But the game is very clever in the way it acknowledges and explains this absence of choice in its narrative. Stop, would you kindly? Would you kindly? Powerful phrase. Familiar phrase. Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly get this? It's a great example of the consistency of the game's design. Same with the lore explaining other things. In an FPS, people you meet tend to be enemies to fight, but that's explained in the lore by the population going mad after consuming Adam and using plasmids. Little sisters are walking rewards, but that's explained in the lore by the city's hunger for Adam and the transformation of little girls for the purposes of collecting it. The big daddies are optional bosses that are rewarded with Adam, but that's explained by the city creating protectors for the little sisters and the Adam they collect. Gameplay mechanics that are just givens in an FPS game are fitted into the lore in a way that actually enhances the player's engagement with the world. So while it may all be atmospheric, you can tell that there was a lot of forethought and care put into matching the gameplay to the lore. Fundamentally, the only choice you're allowed is whether to rescue or consume the little sisters for their Adam. But even that is not a meaningful choice because if you rescue them, you receive regular gifts that make up for the Adam you miss out on. The one criticism that players consistent level at the game is that the choice is very abrupt. Even draining one little sister is enough to give you the bad ending. So while it's true that the game lacks in choice, it's very good at masking that lack by justifying it in its narrative and utilizing environmental factors like random dialogue. It's rare to find an expositional game that hooks players in the same way that Bioshock can. And that's why its atmosphere is key to Bioshock being one of the most beloved games to this day. Why? This isn't so bad at all, boy. <laughs> Thank you for watching and listening. We'll be back next time to discuss another key point. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.